What's going on YouTube? It's Barragam Bam here with D Wagon and F. Hey bro, you need a better name than F. F. I, I let them think of a name. Let's just call him the Marley King, innit? The Marley King? Yeah. Up to you, man. Call him the yeah, Marley King, yeah. The Marley King? No, 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 no. You're trying some stupid name. No, you're, you're the only one with the stupid name, bro. Call hey, you know, what should we call F? Because I remember it's just. You F. call him BR. What's BR mean? No. Banana bro. rice. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's a BR, but not that race. <laughs> How do you not clock that? Well, we call him, we call him, we call him Mali. We just call him the. the That's the Mali King, you know. You're Ooh, dumb, bro. Mali but we are at the Mali Strip because we're the Mali. No, no, that was actually kept. But yeah, um, most dangerous in East London. Do you know what these look? Yeah, fam, man's been there still. You've been there? Yeah, man I see, I see them ducking you down still. Yeah, man can't even rock around those ends anymore. Isn't it? Too hot, too hot. Too hot, too hot, too hot. <laughs> Alright, let's get into this one, you know documentary setting because these are videos I enjoy more than no music. One last thing as well. Everything I talk about in these videos are public knowledge by the way. I'm not spewing any secrets or underground information, just a quick disclaimer for all my videos. Anyway, let's get into this video. Alright, kid nerd. This is what you're gonna do. Or this is what you have to do. You see if you're reporting on like Certain niggas situations here. You need to give them cool nicknames, bro. Like DJ Academic. Do you know what DJ Academic is? Then? No, no. Oh, do you know what? Talking about crap right now. Sure. <laughs> Shut up, fam. <laughs> Guy just jarring, fam. Real niggas know. Real drill fans know about DJ Academics here yeah, and calling people like and giving them the nicknames. Same guy say he doesn't listen to drill. Fam. Shut up. Do you, UK you drill. Are you dumb? Okay, I like it now. Which reps the E10 postcode and SJ, which reps the E17 postcode. Now I mention postcodes, I mean more where the gangs are based rather than rep. Unlike a lot of other gangs in London nowadays, Marley Street doesn't really beef over the area you're from. Their beefs are all drug and revenge related, which is how gangs should be technically speaking. Ah, uh, cool. Mm -hmm. Drug related makes sense because that's like you trying to take my money. That makes sense, but postcode is gay. <laughs> that's factual. Fighting for areas to do even over time. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I'm fighting for the line, man. <laughs> Kill. I'm not encouraging any type of gang activity of course, but obviously it does make sense why a gang would have an issue with another gang if they're stopping them from making money. Now the Marley Strip gang control most of the drugs being served in the areas, but this wasn't always the case. See most Marley Strip older members originated from another group called the Beeman Boys, who were originally a Jamaican based gang who used to run the area. How'd it go from A again? So they went from Yardies to Marley's. <laughs> <laughs> So from us lot to you lot. Yeah, man. The Beamer Boys are based in an estate in East London called Beamer Road. And they had the longest established gang in the area and are thought to have around 100 members. In the late 90s especially, they were seen as the most dominant gang in the area. But the Beamer Gang has always had issues with neighbouring gangs in the area. Like the Oliver Close Gang, or OCG. When a member of OCG robbed a member of Beamer Boys over a dispute over drugs. So the Beamer crew around these times was the biggest gang in the area because of the size of their estate. But because they were beefing so many different smaller areas, they were starting to get outnumbered. Estates are the UK version of the projects, if you don't know. And just like what we're seeing a lot now with these older crime ridden estates. Do you know what the projects is? Yeah, back in the day, bro. Explain what the projects is. Recently, you seen America? Yeah, the slums, bro. Okay, um, explain what the projects is. Okay, cool. Let me see what I'm saying. What was the project? Let me see where it's bare guns and all that. Shut Let me talk. I mean, wait, wait. This is why you're an idiot. This is why you're an idiot. Wait, wait, let me give it a try. This was just bare noise. Alright, basically, you yeah. see, that's a bare noise. Nah, I can rap. No one else. That's your gang. Does that make sense? It'll be like that building versus another building. But these are the times of like. I think it was like the 80s. 90s, Basically. yeah, with all Larry Hoover and them, man. Oh, him, him. You don't know him, bro. I nudged him one time still. <laughs> a lot of booming is now oh, being demolished and refurbished in an attempt to gentrify the area and push more lower income families further away from London. So it's got to the point where pretty much all members of the booming gang don't actually live on the booming estate anymore. And this is a reality for pretty much most gangs in London right now. Many blocks which had high gang activity have now been demolished and rebuilt, which means most original gang members will be forced to relocate and gang leaders will have to recruit new people from neighbouring areas. But because of Beeman's big reputation, recruiting wasn't really an issue for them. But anyway, yeah, Beeman boys included a lot of these Marley Strip members until they split from the gang and created their own organisation. This is more than likely to create their own drug. Mm -hmm. This ain't the Smiley gang, that's why this is the Beeman boys. Oh, no. So these are like the Yardies. Yeah, yeah, the They're just trying to show like an insight oh, to how it's changing. 
drug lines and territory, or it could have been because of personal reasons inside the gang itself. But either way, Mali Strip now beefed the Boomer Boys gang over territory. Now, what a lot of people don't know about the Mali Strip gang it isn't just a Somali gang, despite the name Mali Strip. The founding members of the gang were Somali, but there's all different types of races and ethnicities who were part of the gang. So that answered our question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That answered our question. No, that's called Shark Kidnapped, my nigga. Now, Mali Strip is called Sakhi. You don't know me. I don't know you, my brother. You just know what are you, Tim? A fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan of his work. Now where do you go from here? Hmm? Yeah, and you don't know you, my brother. How, how do you need that? I'm statistic in that algorithm for his views, that's what you are. You don't have no channel views, bro. What is your monthly channel views of this month? Yeah, like a thousand, so I a thousand. Bro, man gets that in a second, bro. I don't even want to hear it from you, bro. You're so a bum. One, you got enough. You are a bum. One, you got enough. So you, got, you, got, you got a thousand views. How do you say that we're not right now? Bro. Mm. Oh, bum, bro. That's no, a really massive really disruption to the borough. Oh, because these guys are really some savages. And they've managed to clean up a lot of drug trade in the area while also running county land operations outside of London, where I said they also operate in Essex and even all the way to Scotland. And they've caused such a no. massive disruption that they're literally beefing the whole of their borough. So they're from a borough called Waltham Forest. And if you don't know what boroughs are, they're pretty much sections in London. I think there's around 32 boroughs in London. And the main gangs in the borough, apart from Marley Strip, are the Boomin Crew, LGR, Priory Court, and Higham Hill. And Marley oh, you got, got gangs in the borough, apart from Marley Strip, are the Boomin Crew. Yeah, man used to live in Copper, I mean, Copper Mill East, East 7 still. Huh? I used to live in Copper Mill East 7. Yeah, man, I remember 17. I ran you out the ends one time still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Deep, but man really don't like you. But that's our up and he's bigger than us. This team put smoke there, thing. The enemy of the enemy is my friend. 100%. No, you know. Um, no, but it's just different because we just speak the same language, isn't it? Yeah, no, but, 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 but. Like, I know like, you mean my, still. like my virgins, like my Jamaican virgins, or my Somali virgins, I don't treat them differently like that. I'm not going to lie, yeah. Like, 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 you see when I'm out with you. Way different communication. You, are, you see when I'm out with you, yeah. And you bump into your Mali dons, yeah, and you run and just speaking languages and that. I just feel left out like raw. No, I am. She's speaking that too. <laughs> These Somali gang members are just a product of their environment, which is sad because deep down, Somalis are one of the most funny and genuine people you'll meet. But anyway, back to Mali. So as like I said, they're pretty much beefing their whole borough, but they haven't been looking. Big little alliances, and another gang in the area called the DM Crew. And when I say alliances, I mean pretty much absorbing the gang. Because Mali Strip is such a massive group, they've managed to take over smaller gangs and building their enterprise, which can work good on the money side of things, but can cause a lot of trouble for the gangs as well. Sometimes this creates sort of a divide in between gangs like the Somalian gang TPO in North London. They have two completely different sets branch out the gang, which both beef each other, which is hella weird because they both roll with the same name TPO. And it's just like one minute you're friends and one minute you're not. And it could even That's just mad. be one person within that group. You could all literally be fine. There could be 10 guys from this gang, 10 guys from that gang. Everyone's fine with each other, but it could literally be that one member that has a problem with another member. And they might have a fight and then their friends are obviously going to back each other with a fight. And it could just create a massive divide. Even within that tight circle when things are getting hard, maybe there's not enough money coming through, maybe there's a drought with drugs some people will look into their circle and think who can we rob but, but that's what makes our generation weak because example same man's got hypothetically speaking same man's in a gang now yeah and man's got 10 people example yeah and two of the people don't like each other we're not going to go split up and go five and five bro you man rock it out one time no grudges afterwards just no more fist fighting so you man don't need to die or nothing yeah just Look, just, just, just do boxing, piss. bro. Just do boxing and sort out your, your anger. Mm -hmm. But if he's rubbing you, then, then mm -hmm. run it back. And if that guy's rubbing you, you lot all exile him from the gang. Can't lie. Yeah, but not everyone thinks like that, though. I, I know, because you, lie, you, like, just fight to the death. I'll be real from rules of the jungle. Those, you're saying fight to the death here. Yeah. You're just spreading bare negativity for one. For two, Random. when I broke your tablet in that prank, yeah, I didn't hear no fight to the death talk. Mm. So chill out. So presence and even gathering police officers information on social media to pose threats towards them. One officer <laughs> noted that members were hanging out the back of their police station and they were actively taking pictures of him while writing down his number plate, which I guess is mainly an intimidation tactic. But it's not just their drug operation which has made Marley Strip catch some attention. Their beef with rival gangs in the area is probably one of the most active in London, especially in 018 and 19 when there was a lot of tit for tat war going on. So much back and forth that I can't even put it all into one vid. But let's go back to 2017 when an affiliate of Marley Strip was stabbed to death in Wolfenstow. So isn't 
name was Elijah Donnelly and he was a talented footballer but obviously started getting involved in the street life. Elijah and his friend was walking down the street at night on May 7th 2017. People say he was trapping that night in the area but either way two members of the Booming Gang, Ezra Soros and Morgan Mockford, spotted the two while they were riding out on their bicycles. The pair then hid behind the telephone box and leaped out and stabbed Elijah in the stomach, hitting the main artery and causing his intestines to start falling out. Elijah after being stabbed actually managed to run to a nearby seashore bar called Arabian Nights but died two hours later from blood loss while his friend managed to escape unharmed. And his killers have actually had a lot of previous convictions from carrying knives mainly. Which poses the question, do you guys think there should be harsher sentencing for knife possession? One of the attackers have actually previously been caught with a knife in six yes. separate occasions. So maybe if the- So question. Yeah. Alright, alright. You lot listen to this. Say it with your boy. Mm -hmm. You're both lacking. No, yeah. Run. You lot both run off. But you get caught. Are you going to say you snicked you? No, because we, we both did the same thing with that old. Yeah. What, what do you say? It depends. How much do, do, do the people have knives? Yeah. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be honest, isn't it? How much people are there? There's two on two. You're not... Like, let's be real. You, you ain't going to punch someone's mouth like that. Long, how long they shank? Long enough to go through your belly, out your back. Yeah, I'm patting, bro. Are you serious? What are you doing? Oh, cool. yeah, we're both lacking. Like, we can't do it. Now. Of course, yeah, I'm run. saying, so say you get caught and your friend gets away, but he calls the ambulance and everything, like, getting ready. Cause he's, already, he's already sneaking. Are you going to say he's a snake? No, because we both no, had the same idea. You rang the ambulance, innit? So are you going to say he's a snake? And we both had the same idea. No, yeah, but, but... Oh, wait, so I got stabbed and he's there with me right now. Yeah. No. What? You're both together. You buck into ops. Mm -hmm. I'm they shank like, yeah, they but, shank both man's intention to run them. Yeah. Both of them's intention yeah. was to run. So, so I, and I, I mean, one of them was slower than bro. Yeah. Yeah, well, one of I'm them was saying, slower. Yeah. But, but, but say, but say but now, but say, innit? yeah, but say now, you didn't run now. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's against a knife, run and he, he, and he ran, and he started skiing. Yeah, but but that depends if I knew if I know him from the start and I know how he's like. And depends on. He don't like and plus, it depends if on. He, if he's a joke man, then he's a joke man. <laughs> Literally. Well, do like, like, but do you know it is? Do you know it is? I can't hold it. At the end of the day, you can't say he's a snake. Reason no, being, snake. reason being, because you both have knives. Why are you gonna fight someone with a knife? That's just yeah. not smart. That's not logical. It's that better, means you're crazy. It's better than one of us running and surviving than both of us dying. Yeah. No, 100%. but there's dumb people out there who try to fight and then they're dead. That's exactly. Like I've been in situations that my friends left me, but that was just because I was young and dumb. Like yeah. think about it. You fight Shank, get it. Exactly. Yeah, you right. can't, bro. You dumb. you can't fight Shank. Yeah, dumb. That's what you need to get. What's what you need to get? Stab proof vest. Not stab proof vest. But they might shank, they might ying your head. <laughs> ying that. That's what I was going to say. You should get, what you should you get? Learn. Back up blades. The man said back up blades. So you lot, what would you lot do? Obviously, it's not, like, I know we're going to make it sound mad, but it's not mad. Like, would you leave your friend? Yeah. Or, how, how would I say that? Like, you lot, if your friend left you, would you say he's a snake or would you say he's not a snake? Because obviously he's just trying to live another day. It mm. works two ways. Mm, yeah, man. But it, it, it depends on how the person acts, man. Yeah, 100%. He's not a guy who runs and then he runs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, yeah, not a guy who runs and then he runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. The police had dealt with him earlier, Elijah might have not had to lose his life. Both attackers were sent to life at prison at the age of 18. So in around 20 seconds of confrontation, three young boys now lost their lives. Anyway, this really started to ignite the feud in the area. We saw some tit for tat from both areas, but unfortunately on March 2018, it was clear that this feud had now spiraled out of control. Three Mali Strip members, Loic Nagiz, Hamza Ohat, and a 16 year old boy that can't be named, were riding out on the hot spot for revenge. When they mistook a man called Joseph William Torres for a gang member called Samuel Hunter and shot him dead in his van in the Wolfenstein. East London, which is obviously always sad to hear when the innocent is it. I said I was mistaken identity then. Shadi. Did you just say it? Did he? Said, yeah. Hunter and shot him dead in his van in the Wolfenstow East London, which is obviously always sad to hear when the innocent person gets caught up in okay. stuff like this. But when you compare the two, they actually look hella similar. Like the same race, the same facial features and height. It's scary. And interestingly, <laughs> the two murders of George. <laughs> <laughs> That's a just racist, my bro. <laughs>
was it? Yeah. We're actually caught breaking into the home of Israel Sokas, the 18 year old who was convicted of killing the Raja who I mentioned before. The day after they broke into his house, the two members actually shot up an amusement arcade when they believed they saw Morgan Watford, the other killer of Elijah. So you can already start to see where the links are between these murders and how the first murder of Elijah has now ignited the mistaken identity killing of Joseph. It also shows how dedicated the pair was to revenge. They were still looking for revenge months after the murder. Anyway, that pair is now locked up for life. After this, the war in the area started going crazy. In one incident, a member of a local gang called Priory Court was riding out looking for Marley Street members and chased four members with a loaded gun, a knife, and a Offer your customers local pickup when you start selling online with Shopify, the e-commerce platform Ammonia, no, they hid in the off license. Ammonia is basically acid, and what some gang members will do is squirt it into rivals' faces, leaving scars, and causing their face to peel off if strong enough. But yeah, Daniel was caught doing this and was sentenced to 15 years in prison, and was actually 15. caught running two. 15. 15. Mm. The most you get is 25. County land operations while in prison. Like, you've really got to be a serious boss to run a whole. Hey, this guy looked like he got his hair down. Cool, running two from. county land. Yeah, in mum's guy. Came look, bro, fresh out he came fresh from you, like, yeah, I'm gonna bend. Like operations while in prison like you've really got to be a serious boss to run a whole drug operation while being locked in prison but the one murder that really started to shine light on this whole situation was the murder of 14 year old Jaden Moody on the 9th of January 2018 Marley Street members stole a Mercedes and rid out to the Beeman Boys territory they caught 14 year old Jaden riding around on his moped when he was out dealing drugs and drove the car at why is he on a moped at 14? Right. was he doing that? They caught 14 year old Jaden riding around on his moped when he was out dealing drugs and drove the car at him at a higher speed and pretty much killed him instantly from impact. The Mario Street members then jumped out of the car and stabbed Jaden nine times even though he was already dead, then fled away from the scene. One of these killers Dude. being 19 year old. Bro. Bro. That's disgusting. Right. And that he's already disgusting. died from the collision. That's disgusting. Man, he's 14 years old, bro. Like, do you know how weak a 14 year old is? Yeah, I know. Like, he can literally just. Beat him up. That's disgusting. I'm not careful. I don't want I will. He was sentenced to die for the murder. Ayub is a classic example of a kid who was had a troubled childhood. He was then groomed into joining the gang. His father died while young and he was put into foster care and worked under a Marley Strip County down operation. And now this young man has now got to spend the majority of his life behind bars. Now when most people think about the group Marley Strip, the rapper Richie comes to mind the most. He pretty Wait, I didn't get it yet. How come I didn't hear about that that about that killing? That fourteen year old killing? It was probably years ago. Still, two thousand eighteen. Thank you, man. Rap, anyway, from you really want to hear someone killing the? Do you really want that, their name to be out? So no, but it's out. Years. It's public knowledge anyway. But why did man like? Why was this not all over the news, from? Uh, yeah, like, I, 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 and he died a mad way still. Exactly. He got it's run over. Black. Black. Yeah, I was gonna. Say. It's because he black, bro, and the person that got arrested was white. Oh man, it's actually mad. R.I.P. from. He's about to set the platform for the group with his song Bingo and put his younger members on like Baby Main, who is now doing numbers. And just a side note, I think Richie is a seriously underrated rapper. Like, I don't think he's really got the recognition that he deserves. Well, allegedly, Richie was involved in a double murder of two drug dealers back in 2014. Now, this isn't actually all confirmed and it's kind of just speculations, but Richie talks a lot in his lyrics how he beat a crazy case and the timelines kind of match up. So, in 2014, a group of seven Marley Strip members stabbed to death two rival drug dealers in the East London area of Leytonstone. Four were found guilty and three were found not guilty. But one member actually fled to Algeria straight after the murder. Smart. Five years later, in 2019, this I same member returned to the UK to clear his name, quote unquote, and was put on trial, and was eventually found not guilty of the double murder. And this was the same year that Richie burst onto the drill scene, where he mentions he beat a case. Obviously, he was found not guilty for the murder, so if it was him or not, either way, the person managed to beat the case. But if you actually type in Richie on YouTube, you'll see all of his original songs are gone. He just straight re-uploads on there. He put a message on his Insta, pretty much saying he's stepping away from the gang life, and is now devoting his life to Islam, which is why he deleted all the videos. Which if that is the case, then congrats to him. It takes a lot to step out of that life and start fresh. So best of luck to him, and I hope he continues to follow that path. Whether that's actually the case or not, who knows though. We'll have to see. If you haven't noticed as well, none of these Mali Strip murderers are actually Somali. Even Ayub was half Irish and Moroccan. So just go- I'm not gonna lie, I was clicking I was thinking, where the Mali guys popping up on my screen? Yeah, there are none. Who's using the money? Do you know it? Huh? Who's using the money? Do you know it? You're just an idiot. So, so, even though the gang is called Marley Strip, the gang is quite diverse. So, in this video, I've probably named around 5 to 10 people under the age of 20 who have either lost their life or freedom to the streets. Obviously, we have sad cases like you who have had unfortunate starts to life, which has led them to make stupid decisions, which I'm sure he now regrets. But, guys, cases like this are becoming way too common now. If you're watching this video and are starting to associate with some sort of gang activity or rivalries, then just stop now, please. If you're already fully involved, then fair enough. Maybe you can't be saved anymore. But this is a message to the young people who want to start getting involved. 
or are slowly starting to get involved. Stop while you can now. These people who you think are your brothers and have got you for life. Spend five years in prison and see which one will still be picking up your calls or sending you money. Ask someone yeah. who's doing life in prison right now. How many of his friends are still sending him money? While all these people in this video are now spending 20 years plus in prison, their old friends or gang members, wherever you want to call them, will all be getting on with their lives. Starting I'm not going to lie. You can kill someone for someone else, yeah? And you get the 25 years. And then like two years into the sentence, them to our friends. Seen it happen, bro. The family getting a job, going on a holiday, while you're stuck in a box because you wanted to ride out for them same friends. Elijah's mum, who I talked about earlier in this video, says she still can't sleep at night after three years of her son's murder. Every day she goes to bed thinking her son will magically walk through the door and the nightmare will be done. Do you want to put someone's mother through that? And more importantly, do you want to put your own mother through that? Anyway, guys, that wraps up today's video. Put in the comments what you want me to cover next. It's been your boy, Kid Nerd, and peace out. What do you think about that? Quite a sad story, P. Like, it just shows really true. It just shows the gang life ain't worth it. It's actually, it's never been worth it, bro. The only time it was worth it, yeah, was like for Americans when they're beefing over drugs, like hard, like drugs only. Before it got into like, he's from that gang, he's from that gang, bro. That was the only yeah, time and it was. There was a couple guys who just got killed, like, like, like mistaken identities. There's yeah. probably like two of them. Especially when civilians get killed, yeah, you deserve to lose some mad time. You see, if you and are, are gangbanging and you and catch each other, then cool, whatever, man, that's you lot's game, innit? But when you're killing civils, that's not and good. And then, at all. then you break about them and all raps? Yeah, you're joking. Joking, so that's still. So, has this changed your outlook on on Marley's? No, oh, well, come on, mm. most of them were Marley's with really. <laughs> that. You know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's escape from. They weren't even Marley's, bro. Yeah, that's true, mm. that's true. No, RIP him from that. I'm talking about the little kid. Because he was just, he just, his wrong place, wrong time, innit? Yeah. And like, no matter what he was in, he he, he wasn't established to be so the main face booter. He, he, he was just trying to make money, that's it. So even his, um. he, even, even his mum is probably thinking, like, raw, my, like, my husband died or whatever, like, my boyfriend, baby father died, and now my son died. So she must think that she has nothing anymore. That's what she might think. You, you went for like that, bro. That, that's actually crazy, bro. What are you deeping over there? Nah, no, man. Just... Bro, is this a... At the end of the day, bare people see it as like... It is what it is type of thing, but it's mad deep, in it? 100% it is what it is, because you can't change it, innit? It's happened, it's happened. Mm -hmm. It's not the first time it's happened, but it's just... It's disgusting. Like, I don't know from, like... like like. They need like they need to bring back youth clubs and that, man. Like, all of these big-ass rappers that they're spending, like... 250k on a watch and that yeah they need to put in and they're from the streets they need to put in bread and like help me get that my guy do a youth like, club or something like cool example say m24 now he was like to like he, he put up on his like example hypothetically speaking say he put up on his story like oh i'm doing a youth club what rappers are going to match my 100k donation example yeah so so say he put it up and then russ put up and then loski put up like that's gonna bring up bare bread you just make a youth club like that's easy doing as well mm. like for them like, anyway yeah i'm not gonna lie yeah. they need to do it or like put like if you run your ends make a youth club in your ends mm -hmm. but what rappers is like once, once they got the ends they don't really care about the ends yeah, no they actually don't yeah from like i see all the americans all them, like, i see bare americans yeah like they do turkey drives and that like they give back to the community I don't see people doing that. Other than Stormzy, I see Stormzy. Yeah. Doing. But Stormzy needs to do a youth club for him. But he's done a lot already, man. So you can't really make everything on Stormzy's shoulders. Yeah. But he does need to do a youth club. But I just went like that. I don't know. Yeah, but you lot, that was Bandwagon Bam, D Wagon, and F React to Marley D Strip. Most dangerous way. in East London. Come. And we're out. Peace. Back it out, slap it out, short but I bang it, pack it out. Man just, man just ping it or ching it. If I ain't did it, I still bring back it out. Kyle's probably hit squad baby, hit squad crazy. Rip man.